In this particular lesson, what we're going to be looking at is solving radical equations with two radical terms. So you'll see in each of these examples uh, that what we have is not just one radical term, but two radical terms. And you'll see, especially in the second example, that this raises an extra issue as far as solving goes. Um, in order to solve with two radical terms, you can see all the steps here. You isolate a radical term. You then square both sides. This will definitely eliminate a radical, maybe both. And if a radical still exists, you need to repeat steps one and two, which will happen in example two here. Uh, then solve, and much like the previous lesson, always check your solutions in the original equation or reject any extraneous roots or solutions that don't work. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at this first one. Uh, the first step says isolate a radical term. So I'm going to choose uh, to isolate this mixed radical term 4 minus root, or 4 root 2x. Sorry. Uh, in order to do that, I would add root 96. Uh, so in this particular case, my next step looks like 4 root 2x is equal to root 96. Uh, you could divide by 4. I wouldn't suggest it. Just leave this as a mixed radical, and our next step is square both sides. After squaring both sides, uh, what we'll see the left side turns out to be is 4 times 4 times the square root of 2x times 2x. So that pair of 2x's uh, can come out as a single 2x. And on the right-hand side, what we'll see is this actually just becomes 96 because it's technically the square root of 96 times 96, and that pair could come out as 96. Uh, or, in other words, these two eliminate. Uh, so our next step, 4 times 4 times 2x on the left-hand side is 32x. And on the right-hand side, we have 96. And finally, in order to solve, we would divide by 32 and we end up getting x is equal to 3. We need to, as always, check the solution, whether it's uh, actually physically doing it or check it in your head. Uh, you always have to. So we end up having here uh, four, four times two time, 4 root 2 times 3 minus uh, root 96 is equal to 0. And you will see in this particular case, uh, I'll just make these entire radicals. So 4 root 6 minus root 96 is equal to 0. If I put in a pair of 4s, and make these entire radicals, you'll see that the square root of 96 minus the square root of 96 is indeed 0. So in this case, the solution is x equals 3. Uh, it also says here to state the restrictions on the variable. We learned in the previous lesson that the radicand has to be greater than or equal to 0. So as far as restrictions go on this particular question, uh, the restrictions would be that the radicand 2x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Or in other words, after dividing by 2, x has to be greater than or equal to 0. That's our restrictions, whereas our solution is x is equal to 3. Uh, in this next particular example, let me deal with the restrictions first. There's going to be two sets of restrictions. Uh, the first set of restrictions has to do with this guy here, which is 3x has to be greater than or equal to 0, or after solving, x has to be greater than or equal to 0. And our second set of restrictions has to do with the radicand uh, 5x plus 4 having to be greater than or equal to 0. And then after subtracting 4 and dividing by 5, uh, we'll have that x has to be greater than or equal to 4 fifths, or to negative 4 fifths. Um, now, um, in order to combine these restrictions, you'll see that the second restriction isn't actually necessary because uh, in order for something to be greater than or equal to zero, it already has to be greater than or equal to negative four-fifths. So the second set of restrictions is actually not particularly necessary when you compare them amidst each other, but it's okay to leave them both ways. Um, so let's go ahead and start solving. The first step is to isolate a radical term. I'm going to choose to isolate the radical term square root 3x. So if I start by subtracting 7, uh, what we're going to end up getting is that square root of 3x is equal to the square root of 5x plus 4 minus 2. Uh, after squaring both sides, this is where it becomes a little bit difficult as far as the right-hand side goes. Uh, on the left-hand side, you're just going to have a pair of 3x's in the radicand, which will come out as a single 3x. On the left-hand side, it's a different story. Uh, what we're going to have to do here is multiply, because it's a binomial, it's a radical term minus 2, uh, we're going to have to distribute this binomial uh, in this way. Okay, so the first distribution, we have 3x is equal to, the first distribution will end up being the square root of 5x plus 4 
times 5x plus 4 if you really wanted to picture it that way. And that pair of 5x plus 4s will come out as 5x plus 4. Uh, so this will be gone. As far as our second distribution goes, negative 2 times square root 5x plus plus 4 is negative 2 square root 5x plus 4. Uh, our third distribution, negative 2 times square root 5x plus 4. Uh, and finally, our last distribution, which I will do here in black, a negative 2 times negative 2 is plus 4. Let me just separate this work uh, from the rest. Uh, so in this particular case, what we have at the moment, and then I'll start making it look a little bit nicer, is this. Uh, if I combine both of these like terms, those are both like terms. I have minus 4 root 5x plus 4s, and then I still have plus 4 here. Uh, collecting like terms, even more so, we have plus 4 and plus 4 becomes plus 8. So we have 3x is equal to 5x plus 8 minus 4 root 5x plus 4. What you'll see at this point in time is we still have a radical term. So it says repeat steps 1 and 2. We need to, again, I'm going to isolate this particular radical term. Uh, so we have... When I subtract 5x from both sides and subtract 8 from both sides, uh, we'll end up seeing that we have negative 2x minus 8 is equal to negative 4, square root of 5x plus 4. Uh, now we need to, again, square both sides. Okay. Uh, so in this particular case, we have negative 2x minus 8 times negative 2x minus 8 is equal to negative 4 times negative 4 square root of 5x plus 4 uh, times 5x plus 4. That pair of 5x plus 4s could come out as a single uh, 5x plus 4. So we're left with, after I cancel that out, uh, this becoming 4x squared plus 32x plus 64 is equal to 16 times 5x plus 4. And that is the same as after distribution, same as 80x plus 64. So after I put this into uh, standard form, uh, what I'll be left with is those constants canceling out. So we're left with 4x squared minus 48x is equal to zero. Uh, we've seen one like this in a previous example. Uh, you could use the quadratic formula, or you could factor out 4x, and you'll be left with x minus 12, which will give you solutions of x equals zero, potentially, and x equals 12, potentially. Uh, what we need to do now is check both of those solutions in the original. So if you can see the original uh, way up top here, I'm going to go ahead and check zero. Uh, into this here. So I have 7 plus the square root of 3 times 0 is equal to 5 times the square root of 5 times 0 plus 4 uh, plus 5. So it's going to leave us with 7 plus 0 is equal to the square root of 9 plus 5, which is uh, <clears throat> going to get us, sorry I made a mistake here, 5 times 0 plus 4 is 4. Uh, that's going to get us 7 is equal to 7, so 0 works. Uh, if I go ahead and check 12, I'll have 7 plus the square root of 3 times 12 uh, is equal to the square root of 5 times 12 plus 4 plus 5, and that will end up getting us to this point. 7 plus 6 is equal to, in this case, uh, 8 plus 5, and 13 does equal 13. So they both indeed work, giving us both solutions, x equals 0 and x equals 12.